Welcome to the part two of our video where uh, we're going to talk about AEDT ISPAC and its applications uh, to an electronics cooling problem. In part one, uh, we've developed a geometry uh, with some electronics cooling uh, with, with two fans, an enclosure, a grill, and uh, let's show our heat sink as well. And our uh, heat generating components are the rest. Uh, we also used uh, net network modeling uh, for our bridge and AGP components. So next step now is going to mesh, uh, run and post process our uh, model. Since the domain and setup is ready, uh, next is like I said meshing which we can do through when we click simulation, uh, we're going to do global mesh settings. So these are the three buttons. So uh, under this, what we're uh, going to select is a fine uh, mesh quality, which means large count of cells. And then uh, we're going to hit OK. And next step is click on the generate mesh button and here uh, in the progress window uh, we're, we're going to uh, track how our meshing is going because this step uh, takes a little bit of time of course depending on the complexity of the geometry and the mesh count uh, so it's always a good idea to track it uh, you know see uh, how many cells you end up with uh, in this particular problem you know it's not such a complicated model so it did mesh you know within 20 30 seconds and uh, what here we see is you know uh, once it's done uh, we, it tells the number of elements uh, we, we can you know look at our mesh uh, typically we do that by uh, using uh, cut, cut planes another thing we want to do is uh, also uh, click the quality button uh, so minimum is 0 0.18 which is pretty good anything over 0 0.05 will probably work uh, same thing uh, you look at volume you do not want any negative volumes that that's clearly a problem and skewness that that that's also good over uh, five percent So once we check our mesh, we're happy with it. We can just hit close. A lot of times uh, when we do a CFD run, uh, we want to, uh, of course, want a convert solution. And therefore, we want to maybe track some key properties at different iterations as the solution progresses. So what we typically do is you know define some monitor points where we track some key parameters of course in this case you know the temperature is the key parameter to track and uh, what we'd like to do is uh, therefore add some mon monitor points which is very easy to do we can for example uh, go to our arch flash to a right mouse button click assign a monitor and then uh, we can just do a point where uh, we want to look at temperatures and hit OK. As you'll notice, you know, it put a monitor point for us. Maybe, you know, we then want to assign some monitors to other components as well. Maybe I'll pick, just pick another one of the DDRs. Now we're ready to start the solution process. Uh, and what we do is we can either click Analyze All directly here. Another way maybe, you know, analysis, we can do analyze all here or ice pack. I think analyze also. You got all these different options.
to kick off the simulation. And again, the progress window at the bottom uh, right hand side becomes critical. Uh, we want to see first the model being created for Fluent, and then that model is going to be read into Fluent. Uh, if there are any problems with the mesh, setup, etc., uh, you know, it, it's going to come and maybe not execute. There'll be some errors uh, that will be passed on, but if we have done a good job, uh, setting up the model and the meshing, uh, it will start execution, and then we'll start seeing, uh, you know, iteration numbers as they go by. So, you know, it took about a minute or so to get here, uh, to get to some, uh, you know, execution within Fluent. Here what we see are iteration number uh, versus, uh, you know, continuity XYZ momentum uh, equations, turbulence equations getting solved and, uh, you know, we we're said we're going to run it up until 500 iterations and as you, know, you can kind of see the solution going forward. Another way uh, to look at track this is if we go under results, if we do monitor, uh, if we do, let's see, click on field summary. Is that it? No, solution data. Okay, so under here, uh, we can see the progress. Right now it's running. If we go to residual, we can see a more meaningful graphical representation of the uh, residuals uh, going down with iterations. We, like before, when we set up, we want, you know, about four orders of magnitude uh, for continuity let's see so for example continuity is the red line and as you can see it's already done three orders of magnitude and uh, we can look at our monitors so we have our temperatures and right now it's fixed at 20 the reason being uh, we're not solving the energy equation yet, see, uh, it, it, the, the curve doesn't exist because what it does, it's going to converge the flow field first and then tack on a, a couple of iterations to do the energy equation. So right now, uh, the setup is first solving for flow and turbulence. So now uh, the run is complete and uh, when we look at the residuals, as promised, you know, it first ran the flow converged it and then uh, switched on just the temperature solution then solve for the thermal field and then here you know you kind of have 20 degrees and then the temperature just spiking up and then quickly settling in so now uh, we know that we have a solution Let, let's uh, start talking about post-processing so one of the first things maybe we want to do is get some uh, numerical values will for this purpose we're going to go to field summary under results so this is going to pop up uh, you know these windows we're going to go to setup calculation and let's uh, pick let's look at objects first and let's look at some volumetric values uh, look at board DDRs and we mostly care about temperature and we want to see them not as a single number but as multiple calculations so once we do that what we will see is the uh, matrix on the right hand side getting formed with solutions and here uh, what we can see is in the volume uh, we can see the minimum maximum and mean temperature for the board uh, and similarly for different DDRs, as you can see, you know, it gets pretty hot up to about almost maybe 90 degrees C. But we can get, uh, you know, some volumetric temperature information. This Another topic of interest is uh, our network temperatures. So this time we go to entity. 
we're going to select boundary surface and here we can see our AGP network and we see our uh, bridge network which we did not change the name for and again temperature let's add this as multiple calculations and here so now we have our network solution and if we're interested in the junction temperature which is right here you know so this is our uh, 100 you know value 146 and uh, for the bridge it's lower at around 62 Another way, uh, you know, to, to look at that uh, is obviously, you know, using contours, vector plots, things like that. So for that, uh, for example, you know, we can uh, pick an object. Let's uh, pick our heat sink and then do a right mouse click and let's say plot fields of temperature, temperature. So uh, this is going to create an object and maybe, you know, temperature heat sink, something like that. And then let's say done. Ooh, what happened? Oh, looks like I've done more like a flow path colored by temperature. So let's go to field view temperature. So this new object is here. So let's let's see. Let's create this plot fields temperature. And I'm gonna mark this time plot on surface only. Let's say done. So it's running through the calculator. Okay. So. What you know, we need to do is uh, I because I did not select the uh, plot on surfaces, it showed a part of the streamline. So what we see is, uh, you know, due to the fan positioning, some strong cooling on one side of the heatsink, and you know, not so much uh, good cooling on, on the other side. So you know, immediately this suggests, hey, maybe the fan position maybe changed, or the uh, you know, AGP position may be changed. Yet another, uh, you know, piece of interesting information is the flow distribution. So here, uh, let's see if we can do plot fields. Velocity vectors. It, you know, because we have not selected a geometry uh, it, it objects, so, you know, what we have to do is, again, first, first pick up an object to draw. So if I were to, let's say, go create my air block, and let's see, I want to see now the velocity vectors. Okay. Let's say done. And let's see what this will do. Okay, so now, as you can kind of see, we both have the temperature and also showing the velocity field on how the flow uh, goes around objects. If we double we can see you know how, how the flow field is moving around so obviously at the end of the simulation you may want to save your model so you know you can click save project and you can see the data being saved uh, if you want to uh, share your model with other users uh, what you want to do is also uh, to do an archive after saving it and that you can find that on the file archive that is the best way to transfer uh, such uh, you know AEDT models 
And that concludes our presentation. Thank you.